here we have the first step, the sketch. Now, I was unsure of what I wanted to draw for this project. I knew that I wanted to do a classic scientific illustration of, excuse me, classic scientific illustration of an insect. And I consider doing various kinds of moths, as you can see a eudaimonia moth here, and here, here's a luna moth. There were all options that I considered, but none of them really stuck out to me. And so eventually, I settled on the Morpho Butterfly. Now, I chose this specific butterfly because it easily checks off the box for visual interest, one, and two, it also holds some scientific value within its bright blue coloration. It's pretty cool. Another choice that I made early on in this idea part of my process was to show both the top side and underside of the wings. I decided on doing just one half of the butterfly blue and the other half the top side of that same butterfly's wings, which is this less celebrated brown wing. I think it has a good contrast and it, it looks cool. The next step here is putting down color. So now that I have my idea and sketch down, I start blocking in colors. And by blocking in, I mean putting in these flat, one-dimensional blocks of colors in these general areas, typically in really large shapes. I use a relatively large brush size for this step. Now, of course, this is art, so you can do whatever the heck you, you want to do, but like, there's literally no rules to any of this. And that's what's so great about art, and it makes me sad to hear that so many people misunderstand art. They think that there's certain things you need to do to make things look good, but that's not even the point. I mean, arguably, there is no point to art. You just do it. You make your own reasons, you make your own rules, and the summation of all of the little rules and decisions you've made in whatever personal process you may have comes out as a beautiful and unique and totally awesome creation. I kind of went off topic there, but this is something that I'm a big stickler about and even if you say your stuff doesn't look good, it look, it looks good, okay? To you people out there who say, hey man, I can't draw, the best I can do is stick figures. Look, stick figures are fantastic. Representative art is a real thing. Look at the stick figures these cave people did in like 5000 BC. I don't know if that's historically correct, but... We're just gonna throw out a, a really big number and put it in front of BC. But anyway, those were immortalized. So let's break down the conventions and standards of beauty and stop conforming to all of these arbitrary and, in my opinion, obsolete rules. Just do it. Anyway, I'm currently focused on getting a general picture of where things should be. Having it all down next to your reference, if you're using one, makes it really easy to pinpoint areas that may need some adjustments. So for me, I made a couple of adjustments in this step, or, or the next step actually, where I moved the little eye spots a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, you know, I, or made them slightly bigger because once I put all of those colors down and then I looked back at my reference, I was like, oh, these things are a little, they're too small or I didn't use the right colors for them. Which brings me to my next step in my process, which is rendering. Ooh. <laughs> This is where things slow down tremendously, and it's also where I struggle a lot with sticking through it and just finishing the darn piece. I'm now utilizing the magnifying glass, and I'm zooming in really closely so that I can paint in the details. And for this piece specifically, the details being the little hairy scales that are on the butterfly's wings. 
And since, you know, well, you might not know, but butterflies and moths are part of the order Lepidoptera. And that word directly translates to scaled wings. So these little critters, they, they have some, they got some scales on their wings. They're a little scaly. So I got to emulate that, make it congruent with reality. Because in this project, one of my goals is to make this butterfly look like it's popping off of the page. Like there is a butterfly sitting on your screen, you know. I, can, I mean, I can only do so much, but that's, that's kind of the effects that I'm going for. I had trouble in the beginning of the step with getting the color accuracy down. I had to lean on the eyedropper tool, which I don't usually do because half of the time I don't concern myself too much with color accuracy, but in this specific project, accuracy is incredibly important, especially with color, because if I veer too far from the true colors in the reference, I won't get the same effect of the real thing, like the iridescence. And so this step, it was a, a bit ambiguous at first because I didn't know what I wanted the end goal to look like, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because I was giving myself space to be creative with my design choices. However, the downside to not hammering down the rules in the beginning is spending more time on the project overall. Now that's a choice that you can decide, weigh out the pros and cons. Once I did figure it out, everything else came together much more quickly because I could then just continue to make everything else consistent with the design choices that I had made. And you might be able to see here, I kind of went back and forth working on the brown side and then onto the blue side, you know, I was switching a bunch. Now this was because while I was first starting on the top wing on the blue side, I was starting to get a little tired of working with blue all the time. And side note, if you're feeling sick of doing something, at least in terms of like using your creativity, think of creativity as a resource. If you're starting to feel sick of doing something, listen to your brain and quit. Give yourself a break. You may have a deadline, but it's like pushing yourself so much to where you get a severe injury and then you can't work at all and then you miss the deadline. The last thing you want to do is work yourself like a corporate grunt to the point where you're miserable and you hate your work because you've associated your artwork with these nasty negative feelings. So <laughs> take frequent breaks. Try to catch yourself before you even start feeling sick of doing whatever you're doing. Be proactive about it. So here you see me finishing up the rendering process and at this point I've become very proficient in finishing these wings and so the last little quarter wing that I did here, I finished it up in no time. Once I finish it, you don't see me actually go back and make little changes to tie it all in together. And the reason why I didn't do that was because I didn't need to. And I didn't need to because my foundation was so strong for this last wing because, again, I knew what I was doing at this point. The paint that I put on top of the, the color blocking part was very accurate. All I had to do was put the details on top and then move on with my life. Here I made a little artistic choice where I didn't put too much detail into the actual structures of the butterfly's body and the reason why I did that was because one, I was afraid that if I completed out the entire butterfly's body then the wings and, and everything, the whole thing would just look too homogenous. And I know that sounds crazy, like, how could you say it looks homogenous when there's like crazy blue wing side and then like the other side's this completely different brown side? Like, well, 
this is the joy of scientific illustration where you get to abstractify whatever that's not a word but you get it you you get to do that for things that need abstraction and the other things you can make super realistic it's all up to you and your own design choices my design choice here was to really make the wings stand out and the insect's body here is not the focus obviously because I'm showing two sides of the same butterfly and so the wings and their patterns the markings those are all the focus I do not want for the insect's body to detract from that and so I, I, I made it really simple I went along with the basic silhouette and then I did some really basic shading and some really basic highlights and you know I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the way it looks after that I fiddle with the formatting and honestly I wasn't really satisfied with the way things were looking up until the very end where I pasted in my paper texture I found this paper texture on Google images all you have to do is search up paper texture or whatever texture you want and copy paste it in you know resize it if you need to and then set that thing to overlay boom looks beautiful it's like putting a little bit of cilantro on top that is about it I, I wanted to create this little story this effect of the scientist out in the field who found this beautiful butterfly and was so taken by it that he just had to rush and you know get it all down on paper while he could and this is what have you it's uh, you know not a super complete and polished look that's not what I'm going for because I, I don't want that uh, you know and here we have it thank you for watching if you have any questions just hit me up thank you